Now, uh, it's unusual that I'd make a video so temporarily close to the last one. But for a little while, I've been doing uh, some internet research on cuckolding. Uh, that is the practice of women uh, who are married or in serious relationships uh, engaging in extramarital affairs and uh, consequently producing children. It's your idea of patern paternity tests and what have you. And in doing so, I come across a number of odious articles. And one in particular, uh, there are so many, I just thought, well, why not just choose this one and have a look at it? It's from 2009, so about uh, three years ago. The title is, uh, it's written by a woman. I think men are the unfaithful sex. A study shows women, all capitalized, are the biggest cheats. They're just better at lying about it. Now you can see in the, t in the title itself the rather ill-conceived tinge tone of pride. The authoress is proud of the fact that women are essentially better liars than men. We've talked about this before. It is true. They have the biological equipment to do so, and they are better liars than we are for the most part. Um, she goes on, rambles on, obviously I'll post a link to the article, to say all kinds of stuff uh, about how women go about their affairs and how they keep them concealed and how they're so much more careful than men are about it and what have you, and this and that. Um, other delectable things such as when women do have affairs and they keep them concealed, hide them from their men, they're often doing it to protect the men. They don't want to hurt the men and they don't want to damage their situation, that is, i.e. the women's situation. Well, well, isn't that magnanimous of them? Well, I this article was pretty disgusting, um, but uh, it goes to show that <laughs> Many, many women engage in affairs we just don't know about. Of course, all my exes cheated on me. I uh, found out about it one way or another. Uh, the last relationship, I'm supposed to give her credit, right? Because she actually con conceded to me. There you go. Within uh, three or four days of the of the uh, the misdeed. Well, you know, this, these kinds of articles shouldn't surprise you. The uh, Fact is, w women have always been cheating. They're just they are better at hiding it. And um, there are other other little things in the article, such as uh, women are better liars because they're more psychologically sophisticated. Well, maybe that's true. Yeah. Depends on what you understand of uh, being psychological sophistication. Now, one thing that's uh, particularly marked about this uh, article is that there's no talk of ethics whatsoever. Um, the, the authoress continuously refers to the, the need to conceal and how important it is to protect the woman's station and to protect the people she allegedly loves. Uh, one woman that she mentions in the article uh, has had numerous affairs or one long-term one but never, never really wanted to hurt her husband because he's, quote, a good guy and a pretty good father. How generous of her. <laughs> she goes on to talk about things, quote, we're also better at mental multitasking. You can keep all the different strands of a lot lie in your minds, remember them, and make them convincing. Well, you know, she doesn't overtly talk about it as far as I see. I only read the article twice. I don't think I can read it much more than that. But, you know, the statistics generally uh, allude to the likelihood that 50, you know, anywhere from 15 and 20 percent of children uh, are not the children of the father. Well, that's why if you do have children, if I were you, I'd probably get a paternity test. But, you know, that's your business. But... There are bigger consequences to this whole idea of cuckolding. Now, we've often talked about our addiction to pussy. It is an addiction, and we are addicted to it. But the, the thing is, and it's so important to stress this, in my opinion, is that despite being addicted to sex and, 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 and vagina, 
we can go indefinitely and live without it and still be reasonably content individuals by finding other activities. And there are so many intellectual activities, intellectual endeavor, gaming, sport. There's so many things that can be equally satisfying and give a much greater sense of achievement with none of the drawbacks. Now, the very fact is, and the title of this video, as you shall see, is that ultimately, I'm, I'm going to say the, the, the ineffable, and uh, God, I'm sure this would enrage women, but the fact is that the female human, ha as displayed in this article, has no ethical concerns whatsoever, uh, is a, a, a creature of deception, a creature of, I wouldn't say malice, it probably is some sort of congenital condition, but certainly a creature of deception and prevarication, that is what they exist to do. More importantly, they are parasites. The analogy is quite apt, because the hosts, that is, we men, we who provide labor, resources, men who have uh, achieved the greatest things, uh, who have essentially brought civilization to where it is now, that, that, that has been the achievement of, of men. Women have been sort of riding, uh, riding the wave, as it were. The host does not require the parasite to live. Quite the opposite. The parasite is most often a burden to the host. The parasite, however, does require the host to live. That is why it is a parasite. It draws its nourishment and its energy, and it lives off the energy and the flesh, as it were, of the host. Without men's resources, without our, yes, superior inter intellect, we might not be as good liars as women are, but we certainly are a lot smarter than they are, and we uh, have achieved far greater things when looked at, the, at uh, from a collective perspective of men um, than women have. And the fact is that women require still, despite their clamoring and, uh, sorry, their protestations, uh, to, the uh, to the contrary, still require men's resources in order to enjoy their parasitic lives. So that is a, an immense power that we as men potentially could wield, or can wield, and indeed do wield. We as hosts, to once again make the analogy, do not require the parasites to live. Um, we can do quite well without the parasites. Yes, there are some, sim, and also in nature, some relation, symbiotic relationships between parasites and, and hosts. Um, that might be the case between the, the, the parasitic creature, uh, known as female homo sapiens, and the male. The, but this article should make clear that we are essentially fighting a war. There, there isn't, there's no, there's no... Uh, there's no question about that. The, the woman who wrote the article, the women she interviewed, the, this is a, these, these are all her, their crowning achievements. Their duplicity, their ability to manipulate their, law, their lies, they're better at it because they're psychologically more sophisticated. Good for them. Um, they can take their psychological sophistication and, uh, you know, twiddle their thumbs with it. And we can take our superior intellect and get the hell out of Dodge. That's my take on it. The fact is that we are the host and they are the parasites. The parasite needs the host. Just, and the fact is that women, as a collective, would simply die off. And the vast majority, certainly, there might be exceptions, the vast majority would not be able to continue with their lives without uh, men to lie to, to manipulate in order to, to garner resources. That is simply a fact, as evidenced by this article. Um, woman does the lying manipulative woman does not want to lose her station in life. So, one thing is very clear, that the analogy that I've made, people might not like it, probably feminists and women, is that there is no doubt that the female homo sapiens is essentially a parasitic creature. The analogy isn't perfect. She does provide services in the form of reproduction, but as has been pointed out numerous times by numerous men going their own way, and simply men with a brain, um, that is her sole power, and her sole means of currency. 
She has nothing else to offer, essentially. Her reproductive capacity and her sex. The sex, well, that can be resisted, as can the desire to reproduce. And I'm on the fence on that in the long run, and as I, as I get older, I'm less and less inclined to uh, engage in that. We all know what the consequences of that can be. But uh, as a parasitic creature, uh, we, the host, do not need the parasitic creature to, to exist. We don't need to, the parasitic creature to thrive. We don't need the parasitic creature to enjoy ourselves. Um, and almost inevitably, a parasite tends to be more, more effort, costs more than it's worth. Uh, we see that's plainly evidenced by our, all of our experiences with women by articles like this. That, um, you know, and, and the sense of self-righteousness is also quite incredible. This idea that she's trying to protect the one she loves, her family, and her station. Well, I don't know. It's, um, it's a scary thing. Um, in a way, but it's not surprising. We know that the enemy we're up against, and the danger, the danger of the you know, of the parasitic female, of of the female creature being a parasite, is that it is a parasite that has been endowed by nature with incredible skills of manipulation, uh, mendacity, and. Uh, and an inclination, and, and a strong incl inclination to make use of those skills. Um, the only thing we, we as I've, I've repeatedly said, that we as men, we do have a superior inter intellect for the most part, and uh, the only thing we as men have is, is our knowledge of female nature. As long as you do not trust that nature, as, is, as should be the case, no man should trust a parasite, we, we can overcome and we can triumph. Now, I'm not necessarily advocating a complete cutting off of all relations to the female creature, homo sapiens creature. Um, that's for each man to decide. At the moment, I'm, that is the lifestyle I am practicing. I want nothing to do with these fiends. Bernard uh, of Chapin's Inferno has often said that honor, I'm paraphrasing, is the province of men. And it certainly seems to be the case. Um, we are much more inclined to honor our debts, be they financially or the debts of friendship, the bonds of friendship. Women are creatures of duplicity. They are creatures that ride the wave. They are parasitic creatures. They have no sense of honor. They look at everything around them as a utility. Um, and all the evidence as well points to the, the fact that women look at their fellow women as utilities as well, social ladders. I mean, the, 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 because the woman is almost exclusively a manipulator, it's a creature, um, it, it, it has no concept of honor. The female creature is a creature that only knows manipulation and deception. And of course, this, uh, this will quite obviously pass on to her female friendships um, that it's not always manifest but we can see it often enough um, male friendship as I often said is, is based on concepts of honor a genuine appreciation of personhood the female that knows no such thing the female creature is unaware of any concept of personhood um, because everything is a utility to her it's a utility to uh, promote her interests, um, to move her ahead, to garner her advantages. And that applies uh, perhaps not equally so to women, but it certainly I, I have no doubts, and I've seen it many times, that female friendships tend to be far more fragile and are beset by far more uh, problems than male friendships are. And, and the reason is most likely because women have no honor. Creatures of duplicity, of deception, and uh, by default, not necessarily by intention, uh, creatures of malice. Uh, I'm not going to lie. This makes me, and has always made me, incredibly sad. And my personal evolution, the path to realization, and I'll go. I'm I'm going on record here, so you know, full disclosure. 
the, the day I finally grasped and internalized the true nature of the female, the, the fact that the humanity that I had often seen in myself and my, my male friends, the, the honor, the integrity, that these creatures had none of it, that they were creatures essentially parasites, although the parasitic conclusion has, uh, happened a, a little bit later down the line, most likely was one of the saddest days of my life. To realize that fully half of humanity um, really lacks, with, with a few exceptions, uh, any sense of ethical uh, code, conduct, and um, is very likely, uh, well, essentially a parasite. That remains one of the saddest conclusions uh, that I've ever reached in my life. And as Barbarossa said, as we stand alone in the desolate wilderness, um, there is an, a power to that, to that knowledge, isn't there? I mean, we, we do know, we, we, knowing the way things are, um, it's, it's better. Knowledge is always better. Taking the red pill is, is, is always better than the blue pill. And uh, as I said many times, once the veil has been peeled back, you can't go back anyway. I, I mean, I'm not going to say I'll never have a relationship again. You don't know what's going to happen in life. But I'll always keep Griffith's law in mind. Um, and I think it is quite likely I might never have one. Um, it is my pet peeve, admittedly, but the thing that disturbs me the most about the position of male in the world, of the male in the world and society, is that we lack humanity and personhood. That we are simply a collection of doings we are simply a, a collection of things which keep the cogs running, you know. Uh, that, that I think that that is that is the most infuriating and and, and upsetting thing to me. Um, and that creatures, parasites with no honor, with no sense of integrity, that 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 lie as as often as they draw breath, <laughs> are given immense privileges, are given so many advantages and encouraged to do so as evidenced by this one article and there are many others i could link to they're encouraged i i am not gonna i maybe i'll post a link if it's requested <laughs> i read this disgusting article by this so-called sex counselor who uh, it's not even worth reading so don't bother but to summarize a female sex counselor telling us how natural how how much more voracious the female se sexual appetite is how much more important it is that the married female have access to multiple uh, sexual partners, and the important role of the husband is to accommodate her need whilst staying faithful to her. And how cuckolding is an important aspect of uh, human society, and, and all human society was matriarchal and should be. How could you, when you read that, how could you keep your eyes closed, and how could it not upset you? Well. You know, I'm not going to lie. Uh, certainly, my my emotionality and my my mental framework has been deadened and, and made rather apathetic to some extent by a lot of this stuff. But it is still upsetting. It's always upsetting to read things like this uh, because it just goes to show what we're up against, and it goes to show what's acceptable. Can you imagine a man writing something like that? He would be skewered. He would be. He wouldn't even be scared. He'd be thrown on the, the the burning pyre to be to be, to be incinerated as witches of of days by gone had been. I don't really have too much else to say about this, but um, I think parasite is the apt term for the female human, uh, female Homo sapiens. Uh, of course, there will be exceptions. Um, I've yet to meet any personally, at least, um, and. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. But remember, the host does not require the parasite. That's the most important thing. The parasite does need the host. The parasite will die off without the host. That's the important thing to bear in mind. Thanks for watching.